I have a graph here that has been tells the story re very well. This particular page of statistics records the per capita national debt of Canada from Statistics Canada from 1940 to 1987. And I graphed that out. Our national debt per capita did not go up here in spite of the fact that we spent billions of dollars for the war effort, but we continued along. We put every person that came back from the war to work. We built universities for them to attend. We brought in Medicare, health uh, care, family allowance, and all those other benefits of, for Canadians. And that worked fine until the mid-70s when something, when other pressures began to push into our governments. And we went along very fine until 1970, 73, 74. In 1974, our national debt stood at a mere $18 billion. That's the national debt, not provincial or, or municipal. That's our national debt for all of the nation. External forces began to put pressure on our governments and through our newspapers that we should not be creating our own money. Okay, now this next graph that I want to show you, again, these are figures that are put in a book, and until you graph them out and can visualize what they mean, uh, they're, they're hard to understand. This is prepared by uh, a top economist, Jack Bedell, who was advisor to Pierre Elliott Trudeau, uh, worked with Ernst & Young. And he was disappointed to see what was happening, that we were losing our sovereignty in Canada. And these are his figures from 1981 to 1995. Our government, in order to pay for a debt that should never have existed in the first place, had to tax the people. And income tax was levied to all of Canadians. And during that period of time, 81 to 95, our government collected $619.2 billion in income tax. During that same period of time, 1981 to 1995, we paid to the private banks $428.2 billion interest to those private lenders who really had no right to be lending us money that only we had the right to create.